Have you ever wondered how a land-scarce country like Singapore, with no natural resources, became one of the most sustainable and livable cities in the world? Singapore's approach to sustainable development is neither accidental nor reactive. It is deliberate, well-reasoned, and grounded in a long-term vision for resilience and quality of life. In this video, we explore topic three of the Singapore cluster, where we unpack how Singapore is building a sustainable and resilient future by balancing economic growth, environmental protection, and social inclusion for generations to come. Are you ready? Let's begin our exploration. Firstly, we need to have a clear understanding of what sustainable development means in the Singapore context. It is not simply about protecting the environment or building green infrastructure. Instead, it is about meeting present needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own. It is a strategic national agenda that influences how Singapore grows its economy, safeguards its environment, and uplifts its people. For Singapore, sustainable development is essential in three key ways. It helps ensure a competitive economy, supports a healthy and sustainable environment, and upholds a high quality of life for all citizens. Singapore's emphasis on a competitive economy means that it must continuously attract investments, generate employment, and maintain strong business confidence. Since the 1960s, Singapore's economic growth has been strategically planned across different decades. In the 1960s, the Economic Development Board was set up to diversify the economy. By the 1970s and 1980s, Singapore became a global manufacturing hub and later shifted to higher value added sectors like electronics and petrochemicals. In the 1990s, the country embraced the rise of services in finance and infocom. And from the 2000s onward, it moved into precision engineering and green growth. Today, the focus has shifted toward building a green economy with programs like the Enterprise Sustainability Program helping businesses innovate sustainably. This economic evolution is a powerful example of Singapore's ability to adapt, invest in the future, and respond to global trends. At the same time, sustainable development ensures a healthy environment, clean streets, good plumbing, efficient sewage systems, excellent air and water quality. These are not just environmental concerns. They are foundational to Singapore's livability. Good environmental conditions also support tourism and talent attraction. Singapore has high standards for air and water quality, but it is not without challenges. For example, the 2015 Transboundary Haze event cost Singapore $1.8 billion in lost tourism and productivity. In 2015, a plankton bloom in Lim Chu Kang and Changi wiped out thousands of fish, significantly impacting food supplies and livelihoods. These events highlight how environmental degradation can quickly spill over into economic and social consequences. Quality of life is also a key outcome of sustainable development. Singapore works hard to foster a sense of community and inclusion. One notable example is the annual Tree Planting Day, which started in 1971. It symbolized community ownership of the environment and instilled a culture of shared responsibility. In recent years, initiatives like the Singapore Green Plan 2030 and the Citizens Workgroup on Reducing Disposables reflect a new phase of participation where people come together to co-create the future of Singapore. These initiatives are not token gestures. They provide real platforms for policy feedback, dialogue, and change. A strong foundation of resilience is essential for sustainable development. In Singapore, resilience is both an outcome and a process. It is built over time through past, present, and future actions. For example, Singapore's search for water independence began as early as the 1970s. After establishing its first recycling plant and experimenting with different water strategies, new water was introduced in 2003. Today, the country continues to innovate in desalination and research to secure future water sources. These efforts exemplify how building resilience is not a one-time project, but a continuous journey. And this is where Singapore's governance approach becomes vital. Sustainable development is made possible through two key pillars, integrated master planning and dynamic urban governance. Integrated master planning refers to the coordinated long-term planning of land use, infrastructure, environment, and social development. It means taking a systems thinking approach to solve problems holistically. An excellent example of this is Marina Bay. Instead of reclaiming the entire bay, planners retained it as a water catchment area and developed it into a vibrant live work play precinct. 
The Marina Barrage was built not only for flood control, but also for recreation and water storage. The area is now home to Gardens by the Bay, a showcase of green design, biodiversity, and public space. Singapore's governance is also highly dynamic. Political leaders set clear direction, coordinate policies across ministries, and engage citizens. The Singapore Green Plan 2030 is a case in point. It was co-led by five ministries and included engagement platforms like the Singapore Conversation. Such efforts signal a governance culture built on transparency, pragmatism, and trust. This dynamic model ensures that sustainable development is not driven by one agency or group, but is a collective national effort. When we look at Singapore's environment and climate resilience efforts, it is clear that progress spans across decades. Since the 1960s, cleaning and greening campaigns have enhanced environmental quality. A well-known example is the cleanup of the Singapore River, which cost about $300 million and transformed the area into a lively, livable space. Today, Singapore continues this work through the City in Nature Pillar of the Green Plan, which aims to develop 200 hectares of new parks by the year 2026. Mitigation efforts include energy-efficient buildings, such as the Park Royal on Pickering, and the use of floating solar panels on reservoirs. In adaptation, Singapore boosts its water resilience with desalination and food resilience by diversifying imports. Economic resilience is another critical area. Singapore strengthens its position globally by deepening international connections, as seen through agencies like the Economic Development Board and Enterprise Singapore. There is also strong support for innovation, especially in sectors like cybersecurity and quantum technology. Finally, economic resilience also involves equipping citizens with future-ready skills. More than 500 skills-based courses have been launched to ensure Singaporeans can remain employable and adaptable. Social resilience ensures that all groups in society can thrive. The Skills Future Initiative promotes lifelong learning, while Total Defense unites Singaporeans in collective preparedness. Shared spaces like Build a Playground at Canberra demonstrate how infrastructure can strengthen inclusion. In 2015, the SG Future Engagement encouraged citizens from all walks of life to imagine and shape the nation's future, reinforcing the importance of community voices. Looking to the future, Singapore also considers how to continue building sustainably. Environmental considerations include protecting life support systems such as clean water, fresh air, and pollination. Climate change, urban heat, and haze present emerging threats. Additionally, due to land and wind limitations, alternative energy sources like solar and wind are difficult to scale, which means Singapore must keep researching and innovating. Jurong Island provides a compelling case study in economic and social foresight. It began as a land reclamation project that merged seven islands. Offshore and away from residential zones, Jurong Island became a hub for petrochemical industries, offering economic growth without compromising quality of life. Today, the government is repositioning it as a sustainability hub, with research funds and biodiversity greening projects to align it with long-term environmental goals. None of these efforts would be possible without political will and sound governance. Good leadership ensures that national reserves are available for crises, as seen when $40 billion was drawn during the COVID-19 pandemic. Long-term development plans like the Green Plan 2030 have guided national action, with policies like the carbon tax supporting emissions reduction targets. From $5 per ton in 2023, the tax will increase to as much as $80 per ton by 2030, demonstrating strong commitment to climate action. In summary, Singapore's sustainable and resilient development story is a multifaceted one. It brings together environmental consciousness, economic innovation, and social cohesion. It is built on long-term planning, coordinated governance, and a shared belief that the future must be designed today. Through these efforts, Singapore continues to thrive, not only as a global city, but also as a home for future generations. So, there you have it. Through the Singapore Cluster, we uncover how this small island city-state, with its limited land and natural resources, has risen to become a global example of livability, resilience, and sustainable development. From managing risks to transforming challenges in housing, transport, and aging into opportunities for innovation, Singapore shows us what is possible when careful planning, strong governance, and forward thinking come together. 
Hope you found this video useful in understanding the cluster content. Feel free to visit thatgeographyteacher.com to access resources such as learning guides, suggested answers to past year papers, link to my customized AI learning tool, and exam strategies tailored to the Singapore syllabus. If you're enjoying this journey through geography and want to build deeper understanding, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with your classmates. See you in the next video.